Hi everybody, this is AJ Brown with Trading Trainer, and we are here once again, and we're here for episode three of our serial on vertical spreads, and we've got our special guest, Jason Graham of the Option Workshop, who's presenting some of this deep dive material. Now, if you remember last time on episode two, we ended saying, today we're going to start visiting the topic of volatility. Jason, are you out there and ready to go? Hello, AJ. So let's get into volatility. Um... First off, um, uh, some very simple standard, uh, some very simple definitions. Um, volatility um, is is basically a one-year standard deviation um, at the amount the stock is expected to to move over a year. Um, if I look at, uh, let's say, a hundred-dollar stock here, um, this is Chevron. Um, what I, we're saying basically is that if, if it's got a 20%, volatility is, is about 20% on this one. I don't know if you can see this arrow. Um, we're saying that we anticipate this stock is going to move between $100 and $80. I should have drawn this down at about $80 down here, um, and uh, about $100 and off the chart here up at about $120. Um, that's our standard deviation. We're just saying the stock has a, a certain range that it's going to fluctuate in. Um, historical volatility, let me go back here. This blue line here is historic volatility, and it measures the amount the stock has actually moved. Um, this is a 20-day period here, measuring how much the stock has moved over that period. And the red line here is the implied volatility, and it measures how much uh, the options market is anticipating the stock should move um, during the life of the option. Um, let's talk about implied volatility a little bit more. Um, in option pricing, um, we have a few different components uh, that make up an option price. Let's just write that in. Option price equals uh, the different components that make up an option price are the stock price or the underlying price um, to the strike price of the option, um, three, the time to expiration, um, four, the interest rate. And five, volatility. Now, we know what the stock price is, right? We know what our strike price is. We know how much time there is to expiration. We know what the interest rate is. So the only unknown variable to uh, pricing an option price is volatility. A lot of you guys have already heard this before. Um, let's take a look at a slide here. What moves implied volatility is an options price. So there is no implied volatility on non-optionable stocks. There's only historic volatility. Um, the bid and the ask of the options are going to be what creates implied volatility. So let's take a look at say, let's take a look at say this 250 put. Um, if a lot of people are bidding this 250 put, buy, buying this thing at. Uh, Let's say we're buying it at the ask at $4.90. Let's say I'm buying it, AJ's buying it. Everybody's buying this 250 put at the ask because this particular stock, I think it's AutoZone, is heading down in a hurry. With, without any other changes in, in these variables here, any other changes in stock price, strike price isn't changing, time to expiration isn't changing, interest rate not changing, the only component that's going to change is implied volatility. It's going to go up as we start bidding the price of this option up. If we, we pay four ninety for it, the option the market maker is gonna move it up to five bucks. If we pay five bucks for it, he's gonna move it up to five ten. He's gotta cover himself. Same thing happens with, with the other side. If we're trying to sell this option and we try to sell it at four fifty, um, we're gonna drive this price down. I'll sell it for four fifty. Then it might move to four forty. AJ's gonna sell it for four forty. It might move to four thirty and so on. We're gonna be bidding the price down. This implied volatility is going to shrink. Um, so implied volatility is very much just a bid and demand, or you know, bid and demand of of uh, of what's happening with these options. Um, okay, let's get into probability theory because this still relates to options pricing. Um, in fact, uh, Black Scholes model is based on this. Um, what we have here, I've taken these, I've taken these diagrams straight out of uh, Natenberg's Option Volatility and Pricing, which is a, a very good book, and I think it's required reading for for just about any anybody working on the floor at the CBOE, um, at least so I've heard. Um, 
what we have here is if you can picture some of you may have seen this uh, some there's been some experiments done with beans um, picture these balls moving through a bunch of pins here um, and they've got to fall into this maze um, you drop a ball in it has a 50 percent chance of going to the left or going to the right when it hits one pin hits the next one same 50 percent chance and so on down throughout this maze and falls into a slot here um, what we call the course that it takes through these pins is a random walk. Um, and if you do it enough times, um, the, the balls will fall into a pattern that looks something like this, and it's called a normal distribution. Um, a lot of you statisticians and, and mathematicians and, and people that are far more into that probably actually know way more about this than me. Um, we call this a Gaussian bell curve, and it's a normal distribution, and we'll look at a couple different forms of this distribution. If we uh, block off some of these pins, uh, some, some of these, I guess, rows, and narrow our range, price uh, will fall in a much smaller distribution. So it, it has less of room that it can wiggle from side to side. And uh, the distribution will be a higher graph, with most of the balls falling more centered. Similarly, if we block off some horizontal rows um, and widen the space that it can move, price or price I'm already getting ahead of myself. These balls will have a wider random walk, and that they can they can move in, in a wider space. Um, what we're looking at here, um, if you can consider these balls, price. This is a, a much smaller range of price, uh, of, of a much smaller range that price can move. It can only move from you know from here to here or from there to there, whereas over here price has a much wider range. Um, so here we have our low volatility environment and here our high volatility environment. Um, so if we go back a few slides to our chart, um, that range is, is basically being expressed by here and here. Our 20% vols bring us down to 80 or up to 120. Our 30% vols are going to bring us down to 70 um, or up to 130. Um, if we consider these balls price, about 68, and, and there are 100 of these balls, let's say, about 68 of these balls are going to fall right about within here. Um, so what I'm saying is about 70% of the time, price is going to fall within this one standard deviation area. This is our standard deviation these from here to here. Now let's imagine positioning our vertical spread at this standard deviation mark. This is, here's our $100 stock with 20% implied volatility. Um, here's our standard deviation. If we position our spread right here, what that does is gives us an 84% chance of profiting on this spread. If we combine all these probabilities of price being up here above our spread, here's our spread, and we have, what is that, a 16% chance that we might get, um, you know, killed on this spread. So the probabilities work in our favor. But remember, this is on a yearly basis. Um, so we can multiply this by the square root of time to bring it down into our trading period. Um, I, I've given you the the, uh, the formula here. Basically, take the underlying price, multiply it by its volatility. We'll talk about this a little bit more, but um, for, for for now, let's just use implied volatility in this in this volatility point, and then we'll divide it by the the amount of days to expiration divided by the square root of time, which in a year is 365 days. I put two two formulas here because a lot of times you'll hear people using 252 days, which is the average trading days in a year. Um, it's arguable about which to use. My particular trading platform uses 365 and all its probability numbers. So I tend to use 365 so that I can just look at my trading platform and see what's happening with it. Um, so here's our, our AutoZone bull spread. What we're working with here is a 23.1% volatility. Multiply it by price where it is now, 252.74, or where it was when I took this slide, or um, and divide it by the square root of time, and we get a standard deviation of nineteen dollars and thirty-three cents. Now, that brings us down to two thirty-three forty-one. This is our two thirty-two forty bull spread. So we're inside of this standard deviation by six and a half points. Um, when we come back next time, we'll talk about 
why we've defied probability and positioned the spread inside of this one standard deviation mark. All right, everybody. See you next time. Don't miss it. Take care. We'll be right back.